top of the morning to you. It is Mad Kids Dad bringing you my first look at Quake Champions. And I am so stoked to talk about this game finally to you guys because it was under non-disclosure agreement for a long time, but I got some nice clips for you guys. We're going to go in depth. We're going to talk about the champions, the weapons, and just many things about the game. So first, we're going to talk about the champions for a little bit. The poster boy for Quake has always been Ranger. This one, I did try him out. To be honest, I only tried out three champions uh, since I've been playing because I've kind of uh, set in my old ways and I have my favorite ones from the past. So I did try Ranger, Visor, and Anarchy. All the champions have different abilities. His is called Dire Orb, and basically he throws this orb that either it can do damage to an enemy or he can teleport to the orb's location. To be honest, out of the three that I did play, I liked him the least, I guess. He's okay, but his ability, I was really not a fan of. And next we have Scale Bearer. His ability is the Bull Rush. He pretty much just runs over people. I played against him and it's pretty effective. Never tried him though. I think I'm going to go ahead and try all the champions just to say that I did, but I'm probably going to stick to my favorite ones that I've been playing. An interesting thing to note is that different champions have different HP levels, so this guy is the max sort of a tanky player with 150 HP. Next up we have Visor. His ability is called Piercing Sight. It's pretty much like a wall hack, whatever, you know, he can see through walls. It's really useful. I do like using it a lot. He has sort of the mid-ranged HP at 125, which has been perfect, I found, for me anyway. Also, with the different players, they have different movement. Visor has, I want to say he has the standard, like, Quake 3 slash Quake Live movement. The better you strafe jump over time, you're going to have faster movement. Next, we have Anarchy, and as a kid growing up, I always liked playing Anarchy because he has that cool hoverboard. But as I got older, I ended up playing Visor and the Doom guy a lot more. I'm slightly salty that they didn't include the Doom guy in this game, but I think it's just because with the release of Doom 4, it was just a huge game for that franchise, and I think they just wanted to keep it separate. But it would be awesome if in the future they add like a Doom guy model. I think that would be pretty sweet. Anarchy's ability is injection, sort of like a stem cell injection thing, so he can heal himself. Anarchy's movement, he has the CPMA movement, Challenge Pro Mode Arena. And it's basically a faster type of movement. It does take a little bit getting used to, but it is very fast. Next up is Nyx. Now Nyx and Anarchy, these two are apparently the most played champions. And so Nyx's ability is Ghost Walk, and basically she can turn invisible. But man, as far as the character model goes, they really nailed this one. The graphics on her hair is just insane. I mean, just take a look, it's crazy. Anarchy and Nyx also had the lowest amount of HP at 75. The next we have Sorlag, a sort of a reptilian type of creature, dinosaur looking thing. The ability is Acid Spit and haven't seen too much people play this one but it's as simple as it sounds spits acid on the enemy also has max health clutch uh looks like the dude from big hero 6 or whatever his ability is barrier so he throws up a shield and i don't know if he's invulnerable i think you could get him from behind but he also has max health next up we have galena her ability is unholy totem and it's kind of like a futuristic trip mine if you will and then slash slash was pretty popular in quake live she has this sort of uh what do you call it? I don't know what to call it, like holographic skates, roller skates or whatever. I don't know. You guys will see it in game. Her active ability is the plasma trail. And this one is actually a pretty decent one that I have a lot of problems with uh, fighting against her. So she'll leave like a trail behind her and it does pretty heavy damage to whoever's following her. Yeah, so that's a rundown of the champions. Just a very basic brief rundown. And now on to the weapons. First of all, I want to say that uh, one thing that I did take note of is that the machine gun or MG slightly overpowered for a starting weapon, you know, and I think they made it in this game that way because if there's new players joining the game and stuff, if they're getting fragged and whatnot, they want them to be able to start with that weapon that's they can stand a chance against some of the in the past, I guess they were better considered better weapons. They made alternate skin weapon models for the machine gun, shotgun, lightning gun, rocket launcher and railgun. And I'm very, very happy that they did this. Like, I have to say it's such a good job that they did that. I'm going to unlock every single one of them. And you unlock it by getting these shards. If you discard different outfit pieces that you get from the loot boxes, that's how you obtain shards. Next, we have the super shotgun. I think that one's pretty well balanced. I don't think they need to nerf it. I don't think it's OP. I think they did a good job on the balance of this gun. Lightning gun. I'm definitely going to prefer the Quake 4 lightning gun over the default skin. Just looks super awesome. 
Now the rocket launcher, it does look pretty similar to the Quake Live rocket launcher. It does look a little cooler. They got the rocket ammo on the side there. And I'm going to be honest, Quake 3 was the first Quake that I ever picked up and played. Never played Quake 1, but I saw someone using this rocket launcher in a video one time and it does look pretty sweet so I'm, I'm probably going to use that one over the default one but i do like the default one in this game it's kind of growing on me now i have to say the one that <laughs> i am least happy with is the default railgun skin in this game like when you're using it and you i don't i can't even i don't want to diss the dude that made these skins but man luckily they offered the alternate skins because i love this quake 2 railgun that's going to be the first one i gotta get because i can't stand looking at this default one but hey i ain't mad at you Got nothing but love for you developers. And I noticed just now when I'm doing this commentary that I didn't show the super nail gun for some reason, but I think I'll use it like here and there, but uh, not the most popular weapon. So that was a basic rundown of all the weapons. So this game, they do have loot boxes like I was saying, but trust me when I say that id Software is never going to make this game pay to win. If for some crazy reason they do in the future, I'm going to make a video with me writing down those words on a piece of paper that I was just saying and I'm gonna eat them, I promise. <laughs> That's how confident I am that they're not gonna make this game pay to win. So it's cosmetics only, all these loot boxes here, mostly different like uh, armor shaders and different pieces of, I guess variants on how the armor looks and stuff like that. I unlocked very little so far, but I mean, you can look at all of them before you unlock them. They all look pretty cool. Like they did a good job on that, honestly, I have to say. You know, it's just cool to make your character unique apart from all the other players. There's so many other players out there. Now, finally to the gameplay. So I'm just going to talk about some various random things that I've been thinking about while playing this game and reading through the hundreds or maybe even thousands of requests or complaints on the closed beta forums. I imagine like the developers, they're having a lot of meetings about this sort of thing and uh, trying to decide, you know, what they really need to apply and make changes to basically for the longevity of the game. Like they're going to have to make a lot of decisions on what they need to focus on, what they're not going to try to touch, all of that. And I think by now they have a pretty good idea, even though they haven't mentioned any sort of release date. Like I said, they're probably figuring all that stuff out right now. And you may see little hiccups here and there during this gameplay. Keep in mind that this is closed beta gameplay, so it's not perfectly optimized yet. They're doing testing with the servers and whatnot. So I'm not sure if it's due to that or it's hardware lag on my end. I could definitely see some incoming comments about like I shouldn't be playing on a toaster or, you know, one of those kids shoes with lights that blink. But if it comes down to that, then I'll definitely look at some uh, hardware upgrades, but I don't, I don't know if that's it. We'll see. I think like myself and all the other Quake 3 and Quake Live players have been spoiled over the years because I've never touched a game that was perfectly smooth as that one. So I know it'll get there. Some history or background on the map names in Quake. In uh, Quake 3, this map was called DM6. So this is sort of a revamped version of that map. And then I could see like Sync Error turning to Tim Willits and saying like, we can't have these letters and numbers for map names. This is ridiculous that these players call them that stuff. Because when you call vote a map, you'd type in, you know, map Q3 DM6. Now they changed that to, you would type in the actual map name and it was called Campgrounds. So yeah, they redid that map in this game, of course. And I should probably say this is the number one favorite map of the community. It was played so much that I kind of got sick of it. And you know, I would get kind of upset with people that would call this map, but you know, I can't control everything. And uh, it is nice and refreshing, I guess, to see that they redid this map. Of course they were gonna do that. And this one is called Blood Covenant. An interesting aspect about this map is that in the middle of the map, you'll notice there's this circular pool of blood. And what that does is it regenerates your health. And I didn't use it because honestly, everyone's flying around. You can't stand still for like more than one or two seconds before getting gunned down. So I can't really see the benefit of using it in team games like this, but maybe it'll be utilized more in duel. Like if that'll be an active thing in duel, you could kind of sit there and try to regen health and be, you know, strategic about that. Now I left my two cents about things that need to be added or improved and whatnot on the closed beta forum. And I also tweeted Adam Pyle on Twitter, the lead developer for this game. So first of all, I want to see the different crosshair options. Now in Quake, I've always used the circle and the dot crosshair. Doesn't feel like Quake without it to me. This crosshair is okay, like I use it in CSGO just because I have to though. But for Quake, I always love the circle and dot. Like if you check my past Quake videos, that's what I use no matter what. That's just my life. So I don't know how hard it is to implement that sort of thing. I'm pretty confident they're going to give those options to us in the future. I uh, don't know exactly when. Another thing that I mentioned that I did notice was that the armors in this one, 
Well, in the past quakes, they've been separated by colors. The red armor would give you 100 armor. The yellow armor would give you 50. You could easily differentiate the two by color. In this one, they kept it all green, perhaps to want to simplify it more, but I don't know. I don't think they're going to change it just because I piped up and said that, but hopefully they do. For now in this game, all the armor is green and they have like, I guess, different shapes to differentiate the different armor types. Another minor thing that I saw another person complaining about in the forum is that they wanted to see the quad damage, which is what spawns at mid there. Uh, they were complaining about it being pink and they wanted it to change back to blue, which was it was blue in the previous quakes. I don't know, that's just another huge preference thing, like I don't mind it being pink, you know. Honestly I think pink is probably a bit easier to see over blue, but I think they're going to keep it the way it is. Another thing that's kind of a, it could potentially be a major issue, is that the heavier champions like I was talking about, they have much more HP, you know, 150 compared to, what is it, 75. And so, with the railgun shots in the past quakes, you could take a few MG bullets or lightning gun sails to your enemy, and then just finish them off with a rail hit and that would just take them out completely now on this one i think if you're a heavy character and you're stacked with armor i think it's probably going to take at least four hits to kill you with the railgun now some people see this as a huge issue all they want to see is no matter what your champion is it should only take two rail hits to frag you and i i don't even know that's that's like a deep <laughs> to me that's kind of like a deep philosophical question they do have a very good point I don't know, but that would take away from the diversity of the different champions because one thing is that the heavy champions with more HP, they have much slower movement compared to the light champions like Anarchy and Nyx. So all I do know is that they're going to do their very best to balance all the champions. I also know there's going to be somewhat of a classic mode that they've been talking about and the champions are not going to have any abilities. Maybe that would be the solution, you know, all the champions just have 100 HP possibly with the same movement and pff, you know what there you go it's perfectly balanced just like in the old quakes we'll see ultimately what they're going to decide and what they do with that so obviously i've been using anarchy in this one i do like his movement and his ability is my favorite where he can heal himself comes in very very useful trust me the game even though it's still in closed beta has been doing very very well it's been catching on popularity i know it's like one of the top played games on twitch right now I've seen Fatality shout out Summit 1G on Twitter, like, hey, we're going to stream together and whatnot. So it's doing very well popularity wise as of right now. Hopefully they continue to rise. And to be honest with you, I'm going to be playing it for the next few years. It's going to be my go to game for a long time until they make the next one. Probably die hard Quake fan right here. I pretty much talked to you guys ears off with what I wanted to say. I'll probably have more with the next Quake video. I'm not sure if the gameplay has ended yet or not, but just enjoy the rest of the gameplay. You'll notice I ran the quad most of the time, which allowed for easy frags. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like on the video. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe. Expect greatness. See you guys next time.